Hey guys, welcome to Adobe Live this morning. We are getting started. Let's get it started. I hope you guys are excited and ready to draw with me. I'm going to be drawing in Adobe Photoshop as well as Adobe Fresco. <clears throat> so I know it's early, um, but welcome. And I hope that you have had a fantastic weekend. I certainly did. Uh, let's see. Looks like we can't see me yet. Okay, there we go. All right. Hello, hello. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be watching the Behance chats. So if you see me look to the left, I'm just checking the chat. That's where I'm gonna be interacting with you guys. Feel free to ask questions and all that good stuff as I'm presenting and fingers crossed my internet works today. So thank you for joining. All right, so like I said, we're gonna get started in Adobe Fresco. Um, We've got lots of great content for you today. We had a last minute schedule change, so that'll be updated um, during the stream. So feel free to check below for information. Um, of course, Tim's in the chat, hanging out with us and all that good stuff. So yeah, hopefully you're ready to draw. I've got my customary Adobe Live warm beverage <laughs> this morning to wake me up. Um, all right, so I'm gonna switch over here to Adobe Fresco. Let's see if I can Boom, magic, there we go. So we're gonna be using Adobe Fresco. If you've never used it before, that's okay. That's what getting started is all about. Adobe Fresco is Adobe's free drawing app. You can download it free, completely free, which is pretty amazing. You can get brushes, all that good stuff in the app. It's pretty awesome. So when you open the app, you're presented with this view. And this view is kind of your, your first step to drawing, okay? Um, let me actually change this track here. It's kind of bugging me a little bit. All right, there we go. So this is your getting started point in the app. As you can see, you can start a new document. I have a few things I created here already previously in the app. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and go to create a new document here. Um, so right here on the lower left side I'm actually gonna turn this turn a little setting on here so you guys can see where I touch if this becomes annoying just let me know um, just a little bit easier to track what I'm doing on the iPad okay so once again thanks for joining us this morning thank you yeah this hat I got um, a while back just for fun thought it'd be a fun way to kick things off for the week. okay so right down here on the lower left of the screen we have a little button, create new. So I'm gonna hit create new. It'll give you some suggestions based on size, uh, common sizes, letter size, small postcard, last, large postcard, all that good stuff right there for you. So let me plug my laptop in actually. Cause like I said, we're gonna be, <laughs> we're gonna be bouncing between apps. So, um, so I'm gonna do a tabloid that's 11 by 17 because we're doing some landscape painting today, okay? Landscape painting drawing. Um, I particularly enjoy it, super relaxing. And the best part is you have tons of inspiration all around you, really easy to do. Now, with Fresco on the left, we have all our tools, paint brushes. There are uh, live brushes, vector, erase, um, shape tools, move, okay? Transform, paint bucket, eyedropper, and the ability to import pictures. But what I need to do before we get started. I mean, this is getting started, but before we get started, what I need to do is, <laughs> thank you, thank you, I love this hat too. Um, kind of decide my structure here, and I'm gonna teach you a little bit about how I think about um, drawing a landscape painting, okay? So a couple of things um, I wanna talk about. So the first is I'm gonna establish a horizon. Now, you may have heard of the rule of thirds, Okay, that's generally speaking a simple way to guide your uh, framing of a scene. So if you imagine this canvas, if I divide this, this is just going to be really rough here. Um, but if I divide this into thirds, okay, and I were to pick either this line or this line as my horizon, okay, I can pick either line. Um, that's going to create or, or guide me a bit closer to having a more interesting presentation than if I were to say pick the absolute middle okay so if i were to pick the absolute middle here i guess i didn't have to redraw that i could have moved it showed you guys something um but if i were to pick the absolute middle it's not as uh, aesthetically pleasing 
okay, and interesting, as if you were to frame it in thirds. So if you look at photography, if you look at paintings, illustrations, things like that, you'll notice this pattern repeating itself over and over. So draw from observation, and I don't mean necessarily literally drawing, but keep your eyes open, look at good examples, and that's going to inspire you and help you create even better work. All right. So that's the first thing. Rule of thirds, all right? So I get to pick which one. Now, I'm gonna pick this upper line here for my horizon. I can leave this leave this layer up. Um, go ahead and increase the intensity. Now, I, I'm using the default brushes in Fresco. They're actually pretty awesome um, if you wanna try those out. So if I tap on my pixel brushes here, I have these selected as favorites, um, but little 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 bit of a tip here for you. If there's so many brushes here, I've even made my own brushes and that's what we're gonna do a little bit of today. Um, and import those and kind of go back and forth between Fresco using the power of Adobe Creative Cloud and the Cloud Sync. Fingers crossed it works this morning. Um, but here under sketching, we have pencil or pen. And if you're using an iPad Pro, you can tilt this pencil, we can shade, right? So it's a pretty powerful tool. Even though it's a basic tool, it's, it's very powerful. All right, so now the next thing I wanna teach or show you guys is setting up your scene and thinking about scale, emphasis, placement, and that kind of thing. Sean's asking, am I using inspiration? I am not using inspiration this morning. I'm using, I'm using my memory and my experience, all right? Ah, good to see you all as well. Okay, so the next thing, I'm gonna draw this kind of in 3D, all right? So let's say, our scene is basically made up of three layers, okay? Something like this. If you were to take the whole layer stack, right? And basically just put it in 3D, it might look something like this, okay? So as I'm thinking about the scene, I have my background. I'll just put BG. You guys know what BG is, background uh, or bad guy. That's background, background. And then we have the midground, okay? And we have our foreground. Okay, so as I'm thinking about my scene, I'm thinking about, okay, what's furthest away? And of course, there's gonna be stuff in between here, right? It's not as simple as just three layers, um, but I like to simplify things as much as I can because uh, painting, drawing can be really complicated, but if you think about it in these three uh, planes, it makes it a lot easier for me to decide where to put what, okay? So that's what I'm thinking about as I'm gonna create this scene. All right, so if you've watched one of my lives before, you may have heard me say this before, but when in doubt, rough it out. Um, I'm actually an industrial designer, that's what I do professionally, and I illustrate a lot. And so one of the things I found helpful is to just rough out my sketches as I'm drawing. All right. So I'm actually going to keep this horizon layer up and I'll do, I'll create a new layer and let's use red and blue lines. I like to do this sometimes to quickly kind of map out elements. Now scale and emphasis are going to be part of your scene deciding, you know, what's in the foreground, what's in the background. I happen to live in Salt Lake City, Utah. So the terrain here is gorgeous, north to south, lots of variety, um, lots of things happening. So if this is my horizon here, I may have you know, some mountains off in the distance, for example. And here you can kind of see I am framing the scene so that the horizon is not merely flat. Okay, so we can just start with a few lines like so. All right, just kind of scrub those in. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can even dip below the horizon line. Um, if you do dip below the horizon line, what you're actually communicating is that this mountain or thing is now a bit closer. Um, Jordan, if you want to break out the disco lights, that is totally cool. So by, by dipping below the horizon, I'm now saying this is a little bit closer, okay? And I can play with the shapes here. If I want something in the foreground, um, let's just change the color, make this a little bit easier to see. But if I want you know, some sort of rock or thing here in the foreground I can kind of sketch that in and I'll figure out what's happening at the bottom here but just kind of roughly expressing some rocks some nice straight lines here okay something like that just kind of getting a quick 
and dirty sketch. And I actually should do this with black lines to save some some time here, but I'll go ahead and just kind of rough this in. All right. So maybe there's some large large rock thing anticipating maybe there's going to be a tree here um, or something. But let's go ahead and add some some midground midground stuff as well. You know, maybe there's another another land feature if this is a valley for example like if this actually comes down like so maybe we have some other uh, things happening and we can kind of repeat those shapes right so now we're now we're cooking with the gas so to speak creating some land and rock formation so really great question earlier about whether I'm using inspiration not right now but a lot of this comes from my trips, travels, uh, like I said, keeping your eyes open and being aware of what's happening as we go. What's up, Ishant? Hello, 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 everyone. Um, hope you're having fun. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this here. Actually, let me switch back to blue. So if I'm switching colors a lot, pardon me, one of the cool things about Fresco is it actually saves all your recent colors. So you don't have to worry about, okay, what color was that again? How do I pick it out? Um, here you can see I have my red, blue, red, and black. So those are the colors I'm using. Um, just by force of habit, I did pick a new red. I'm not too concerned, but just a call out if you want to pick another color. And even just adding some shading here allows me to just plan ahead for some of these shapes. Okay, in these rocks. And again, you kind of you kind of learn from observation. So keep your eyes open, keep your eyes peeled. All right, I'm just gonna anticipate maybe putting some grasses here, trees, whatnot, in my scene. So I can sketch sketch those in, just roughing this in, okay? Again, framing the scene. So now we have some direction here. We've got some emphasis, meaning we have these larger structures. Okay, and again, this is just rough fun sketch no pressure no stress i believe when you're drawing you always want to be super relaxed okay especially if you're getting started so make sure you're relaxed oh good evening we've got evening watchers awesome it's early for me so i've got my uh little chai tea here and <laughs> trying to stay awake for getting started I guess if you're if you're watching super late, you're probably trying to stay awake too. Okay, so I've got these shapes in the foreground here that I kind of like, like I said. Um, I'll figure out what's happening on the side here in a little bit, but um, creating this kind of direction, movement, and framing. Let me just go ahead and erase those guidelines. All right, and let's switch back to the red, and I'm actually gonna start shading it. Oops, that was my eraser. Start shading in a little bit. Okay, I know this is where my mountains are gonna be back here. Kind of delineate foreground and background as I'm going, okay. And so for this mid-ground, what I've kind of been saving, oh, uh, let's see, what's a good color here? Let's use just a, a green. So let's say I want something of a river happening, okay, or something like that, like a either river or trail or whatever. We'll figure that out as we go. Um, I can kind of zigzag from the horizon line. So remember, we already set the drawing up with our thirds. Okay, I can turn that layer off so you can see. So compositionally, we have those elements that proportion, um, that is pleasing inherently, and we can kind of build on that. So set yourself up for success by applying, you know, if you, if you see a good image, apply what you perceive in that image to what you're going to do and it will actually help your um, work appear to be a lot better all right so now i've got these elements here um oops i was drawing on the wrong layer my bad happens to the best of us okay so now i'm just gonna keep working this river here just kind of have this off and even further back than these red mountains, I can even say maybe maybe there's some other mountains way off in the distance, okay? So we can have layers to all of this. That's totally fine. All right. So once I've done my quick sketch here, I'm going to come in with 
a little bit stronger line work using the same brush because I love I love that pencil brush and if you're painting um, pencils are kind of nice when you're painting all right so let's finish up our kind of our rock formations here you know maybe this one instead of being an angular rock I can come in and make some changes again just pay attention to elements you see around you um, sometimes I'll collect images I love photography collect images of things that you find interesting you can always use those to answer that reference question but more importantly if you want to draw rocks or you want to draw trees or you want to draw landscapes you kind of have to observe what those look like first all right you may notice as well when I draw a lot of times I will actually um, make the canvas a lot smaller and that's because it allows me to kind of cover a lot of ground with fewer strokes of my pencil so having that smaller canvas I'm not trying to trick you guys or anything but makes it a little bit easier to kind of get those broad strokes in all right so you'll see me do that from time to time so if you are following along or if you're doing your own landscape awesome um, feel free to post that in the Photoshop discord share your work okay these lines are kind of like surface lines they kind of help me think about how I'm going to color shade and so forth um, and figuring out the scale as well okay so let's go ahead and just shade in a little dark area here maybe a little bit of fall off so some sort of canyon ravine thing happening here okay I know it looks super messy but that's okay that's kind of the point is to uh, just rough it out when when in doubt let's get some clouds in our scene here all right oops my bad <laughs> get some clouds in our scene here and uh, we'll just keep going okay you guys saw I was watching Netflix last night <laughs> so new layer and now I'm going to create an adjustment to this layer so in fresco you can do a lot of things that you do in Photoshop things like adjusting opacity you can make layer groups uh, mask transform select um, not everything but you can do a lot of things so here I'm just gonna tap this layer properties slider and now I can just slide the opacity down and the reason I want to do this is I want to reference the layer without having that get in the way so it's kind of like taking a thin piece of tracing paper um, and putting it on top of a drawing that you've already done and allowing yourself to trace over it so that you can create your final drawing so that's what I'm gonna do now taking a little bit extra care and I'll still use this pencil but now I'm gonna switch my lines to you could use a brown a gray or black something like that I'm just gonna go ahead and use a black all right so once again feel free to ask questions in the chat I will be paying attention to the Behance chat if you're joining on YouTube so thank you for being a part of the stream all right let's see here okay just need to make a quick adjustment all right so now on this new layer this is where I'm gonna focus on all the structures in the scene so just these rocks for example okay so now I can kind of come in use some nice thick to thin lines for example get some textures in and again these are just things that you kind of pick up on as you as you make those observations so I'm no geologist <laughs> but I'm just trying to pull from memory pull from experience here um, some of these these lines that might appear in the rocks in this particular formation okay so photography is one way to do that if you take a lot of pictures um, just observe things as you go the other way to do that is just taking a sketchbook with you and drawing wherever you go all right you're basically making deposits in your visual library bank so to speak and then you can withdraw those deposits when you're drawing so it's another good way to think about it 
Okay. So we'll just keep going here. Let me know if the dot's getting too much in the way. <laughs> Tim says all the best sentences start with, I'm not a geologist, but, <laughs> right. Hello, Martha. Welcome to getting started today. All right. Now, with the pencil, the more you tilt the pencil, the wider the stroke's going to be, okay? So if I tilt and I start shading this in, which I could do, um, you'll notice that I have a wider stroke. And if I tip the pencil up a little bit, I get a thinner stroke. So pretty handy. Um, if you haven't tried this out before, um, if you have a friend who has an iPod, iPad or a way to try one out, highly suggest it. It's pretty cool. It's a great way to kind of have a natural feeling as you're drawing. All right. So we'll just get those rocks in. All right. So this is kind of the foreground. Remember we talked about, or I talked about, um, this idea of foreground. Oops. Talked about this idea of foreground, middle ground, and background, okay? So what I'm doing right now is kind of drawing this foreground element. It's this large rock element, okay? If lines are gonna be part of your drawing, great. If not, no worries, but in any case, scale is one of those things that's gonna communicate foreground. So now I can zoom in a little bit, and let's say this is my mid-ground, and I have similar formations down here. I can kind of kind of just sketch those in, right? Definitely lighter as well. The other thing you'll notice in perspective drawing, painting, things like that is that things closer to you have more detail than things further away. So, as you're doing this, if you are attempting to create some sort of landscape, Try to consider reducing the amount of detail as you move back, okay? So even here, I have these lines, but I'm not as not trying to be as careful as I was with the rest, okay? And that's because we are kind of now in the, the mid-ground of the drawing, all right? Just, just trying to capture the shapes more so than all the details. And as we move to the foreground, that's where we'll have more detail and so forth. All right. Okay, so we're cooking with the gas. Here we go. So even moving into the background here and you can kind of see hopefully how this, this is kind of working, all right? Taking these red lines and even as I move back, just trying to be even lighter with my, my touch on the canvas stroke and so forth. All right, so we'll do a lot of this painting in fresco, but we're gonna jump over to Photoshop in a little bit and talk a little bit about brush creation. We'll make two brushes, see if we can use them in the scene, okay? Uh, particularly on this side of the scene. All right, so I kinda wanna transition into, if possible here, a little bit of a almost a grassy knoll on the front or grassy hillside. All right, so just getting some more squiggly, scribbly lines here for these rocks, okay? As we move a little bit closer to the foreground, but kind of maintain this ravine, okay? So as we move a little bit closer, adding just a couple more details, lines, and so forth. All right, if I turn this layer underneath off, you can kind of see what this is starting to look like. All right, little tip here for you in Fresco. If you just pinch in real quick, if you just pinch in, oops, you'll get to 100%, okay? It takes a little practice, but you'll get it. And sometimes if you pinch, I like to hold my pencil like this, so if you pinch and your pencil's close to the screen, it might not work, but just be patient. You'll get the hang of it. Just pinch in, and now I can do some refinements, okay? It's always helpful to turn off that layer sometimes, that background layer, so you can actually see what's kind of happening in your drawing. All right, so something like that. Got this nice strong element in the front. All right, I'm gonna add a few things maybe that I didn't quite capture. All right, and I'm gonna 
I know the river that I wanted is kind of somewhere here. So actually it just um, went to the Grand Canyon. That was an amazing experience. I don't know if you guys have been to the Grand Canyon, but pretty spectacular, uh, life-changing almost experience. So highly recommend. If you've never done it, definitely uh, take that opportunity if you ever have the chance. It's quite amazing. Okay. All right. So there I've kind of got a little hint of my river. You know, maybe I won't see as much of it as I um, move a little bit closer here. Maybe some little rocks at the base. I can sketch that in. Just scribble those in. All right. Something like that. Now I'm gonna use a combination of brushes here. I'm not gonna to stick to one media, one medium for this particular sketch. Um, one in the interest of speed, but two, I think it'll be I think it'll be an interesting experiment actually. So we'll play with a couple different brushes. All right. All right, a couple more, a couple more little lines here in the front. But as you can see, now we have a drawing. Okay, we've got a drawing with a foreground, midground, and background placed. And kind of, no, not really even kind of. We planned this out, so just a quick recap for you. I was like, why is my layer? <laughs> so just a quick recap. We used red and blue and green. Just quick color uh, layer planning, if you will, on one layer. Um, that's kind of the benefit of using the, the, the quick colors, red, blue, green, purple, whatever you want to use. I like red and blue, and then I'll add green if I need to. Um, just quickly plan that out. Also, again, this idea of the rule of thirds. So at this point here, we've got, in my drawing anyways, we've got sky, and we've got the landscape here, right? And even things like foreground, you can kind of think of, I'll just write this in so that that large rock in the foreground right kind of breaks that third a little bit but it helps create a more compelling visual composition so definitely something you can try and should try if you're into this and want to dry draw pardon me some of these things okay so let me go back here and i'm going to just quickly add some color to this drawing one of the things i like to do uh when drawing or painting is you can actually turn the opacity of this top layer down. So if you wanted to do more of a painting, um, painted look. So let's say we wanted to use a live brush and I'll use the oils, for example. So we've got these chunky, round, whatever oil. Um, for colors, you could reference an image if you want to, or if you want to just um, by reference, I mean actually import the image into the app and pick those colors. I just have an image on my desktop I can use and reference color from. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna pick kind of a nice dusty orange here, not too saturated, not too bright, and we'll just start painting. Okay. So again, I'm just using an oil paintbrush here and I'm okay with this because the oil paint actually will appear to be a lot more intense than say something like the watercolor if I were to wash the background with watercolor. So again, I'm going to be using a bunch of different uh, materials here for this drawing, this particular drawing. Um, the other thing I'm going to try and do is, as far as colors go, let's go ahead and make this brush real big. We'll just paint real fast. Um, the other thing I'm going to try and do is pay attention to warm and cool colors because that's going to help uh, help with my lighting in the scene. Okay, so here we'll just fill this in real quick. Just so you know, the brush controls in Fresco. If you want to. Uh, quickly make some adjustments. You have some handy controls on the left side. So here, this number that says 374 currently, that's 
that's a way for you to tap and slide up or down and adjust your brush size really quickly. So I can slide down, now it's 51, slide all the way back up, it's 380 something. Um, or you can tap and slide as well. All right, so really handy if you want to adjust the flow, which is how much pigment's coming out with each stroke. Okay, if you want a heavy, heavy brush, you can increase the flow if that's how you like to work. The best thing about digital tools like this is you want to be able to customize your tools, tweak things, play with it, get your hands dirty, and find what works for you, right? Don't do it the hard way. Find what works for you and make that work. And we've got the mixing properties of the brush as well and a few other sliders that we can get into and play with all right so let's go ahead and finish filling in here just some nice nice light but big strokes okay and pay attention to the direction of your strokes as well so um, you may notice on the rocks themselves i'm trying to paint along with the directional lines here that i kind of created all right for these rocks. So if the top rock, rock surface changes direction, I change the direction of the, br of the brush, okay? And that's how I'm going to kind of reinforce what I'm trying to communicate with this main brush. All right, so now that I have my kind of, even in the way that I organize the layers, the foreground, okay, in the landscape scene is gonna be quite literally the top layer. Now as I move to the midground, I may switch my pigment a little bit to be less saturated or even shift to something that's that's greenish or grayish. Okay, we're gonna take some of the color out. Um, and the further back, the cooler the tones will be as well. So just moving into a little cooler tone here. Okay, and let's actually go lighter. So another tip for you is that in the, let me make sure I'm not missing any messages here. Okay, cool. I <laughs> just making sure I wasn't missing any messages from the control room here. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter. If you want a little bit gr more granular control of your colors, one thing you can do is tap on the HSB sliders, okay? That stands for hue, saturation, and brightness, okay? So hue, what color is it? Saturation, how intense is it? Brightness, how bright is it? How light or dark? Okay, um, so I'm gonna use these sliders because I wanna drop the saturation and I wanna actually wanna increase the brightness, okay? So it just gives me a little bit more control so that now when I paint in this mid-ground area, okay, and notice again, as I'm painting, these strokes are now kind of in the direction of these rocks, okay? And maybe we won't finish the whole painting today, but this is super, super fun. Live brushes are are quite simply just a delight. So if you've never tried them, be sure to try them out. It is just insanely fun, okay? So just painting down here, okay, with that stroke, like so. And now I kinda wanna get the top surface. I'm actually gonna go a little bit warmer in that color, a little bit lighter, okay? And just, well, now let's just paint on the same same surface here, okay? So like I said, maybe this side is a little bit grassy. So again, you can kind of see here, the direction I'm painting relates to the direction of these structures. And don't be afraid to rotate the canvas to whatever works for you, okay? And once you get in the habit of this, you can quickly change your brush size or settings by using the panel on the left, all right? So if this is too fast or if you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the chat. I am checking the Behance chat. And if you have work to share, either during or after the stream, check out the Discord, the PS Discord. I'll hang out for a bit after the stream. If you guys end up sharing anything, maybe Tim can share that link in the chat so you guys know what I'm talking about for the Photoshop Discord. All right, so let's keep painting here. Just getting our colors in. I'm actually gonna use a bigger brush. Let's, let's just move real quick here, super fast. So again, if I scale down, it just gives me a chance to kind of quickly place my colors. Now I'm gonna jump to another layer for the background and I'm gonna use a bluish 
tone, bluish green, grayish tone. All right, so I'm just gonna come in here and just start painting those in, okay? And actually, I wanna go a little bit lighter. So two finger tap on the screen lets you undo. So I'm gonna go back to my color and drop my saturation, but up, up my brightness a bit as well. Just like so, uh, that feels good. Okay. Now we kind of have to decide what time of day day this is. Um, if it's you know dusk or um, it's, let's see, dusk is oh yeah, dusk is in the evening. I always confuse dusk and dawn. Um, if it's dusk, we're gonna have a certain lighting setup. If it's dawn, we're gonna have a certain lighting setup as well. So that's something you kind of have to decide. I'm gonna go with. Um, Maybe maybe the beginnings of dusk, all right. A little bit of a little bit of a gradient in the sky, so to speak. All right, so I can pick my main hue on the color wheel, and watch. Even as the wheel, as I move around the wheel, you can see the hue slider moving. So if you've never used this before, check it out. <laughs> PD Discord. <laughs> it's PS Discord. So bit.ly/ps discord. Link is in the. Behance chat, um, but as I slide around this ring, you'll you'll notice that the hue slider actually moves as well. So think of it as what's the main color I'm trying to pick here? All right, so I'm going to pick a very desaturated and bright blue, and let's scale my brush up. Okay, and I'm going to try and paint a gradient here. Okay, we're just going to paint in some sky. Let's go a little bit brighter and lighter. And now I'm going to pick some orange. Let's play with the paint mix. See what we can come up with here. All right, I do want something a bit more of a kind of a nice salmon color here. Undo, okay. I want to go a little bit brighter as well. All right. Let's see how this let's see how this is treating us. That feels good. Okay, so nice big brush and I'm going to turn the flow down a bit. Okay, and now we're mixing those colors. So, when you turn that paint mix up, it's going to mix those colors and we can start to create a little bit of a a gradient here okay you could I suppose just go into Photoshop and put a gradient in but it's not as fun I don't think it's as fun all right so I'm gonna up that flow again kind of reset that that mix play with the settings see what works for you got a nice little glow here on the horizon all right let's throw some some white in here as well lighten things up just keep working on that gradient all right a little bit of a process so another tip if you're picking colors from the canvas okay you can just tap on the screen a loop will appear loop little magnifier and on the top is the new color you're selecting and on the bottom half you'll notice that the color ring around that plus sign and circle is pink on the top pinkish coral and we have white on the bottom okay so the white is the current color and the pink is the new color so if I want to just pick a little bit in between I can just roll my finger to where I want to stop and keep working on this gradient so it's a really great way to find those in between values okay keep mixing painting much like you would with real paint just kind of mix keep going all right if we need to create intensity we can do that as we go all right but super fun these live brushes are simply put just incredible okay now like I said I'm working on separate layers so I just have to kind of pay attention here and make sure Let's see, I'm gonna reduce the size. Make sure I'm painting on the right layer when I get to those layers. So 
And you'll see why in just a sec. Because now that I've kind of decided the tone for the sky here, I want to actually bring some of that in on the land itself. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to jump around a little bit. I do want to finish my mid-ground. So selecting my mid-ground layer. And let's go ahead and just finish painting in a bit here. All right. Paint in the rest of our ground. I'm actually going to pick some of this green. Let's scale down. Kind of have some of this green in the blue. Nice and faint. Mixing everything together. All right. Because I also am a little bit unorganized, <laughs> my quote unquote trick for finding layers, a lot you might see me do this, is turning the layer on and off. So if you see me do this, turn the layer on and off. That's me just trying to find it real quick, okay? So old habits die hard, but there you go. All right, so now I'm gonna just add some of this green, all right? Because we want the whole painting here to feel kind of cohesive. All right, so adding some of this green to the background. You know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna combine these layers. So tap on the layer, merge down. We'll just merge these. We'll go for it. Yolo, they say. Is that what the kids are saying these days, or have they moved on to something else? All right, so all one layer, and now I can. Add a little bit of green, okay. Just just little hints. So now what I was saying is because of the time of day, you want to pay attention to. Ah, uh, pardon me. <clears throat> you want to pay attention to the colors in the scene. So I have this kind of orange, and let's on a new layer up top. I'm gonna take uh, just a different brush here. Let's see my basic brush. I'm gonna use this hard round brush. You could create, say, in uh, your CC libraries, a palette if you're using. Um, a lot of times I'll just kind of on the canvas itself place some colors, some key colors that I'm using. Okay, so here's here's my coral, here's my blue right there. Um, I'll go ahead and pick this brown. The other thing you'll notice with the live brush is it actually has a texture, so it feels like. <laughs> yep, YOLO. Feels like you're painting on a canvas, right? Pretty cool. So I'm just going to pick some of these key colors so I have them available. We can turn this layer on and off as needed. Uh, I think I got that one. There's our green. OK, cool. So we'll just keep moving here, keep cranking. All right, I do need a shadow color. OK, so because the light is warm, Okay, because the light is warm, I'm gonna use cool colors for the shadow. So you could even use something that's a little bit purplish, something like this. So here, for example, as we get into these rocks, oops, wrong brush. <laughs> back to my live brush, back to my round oil paint. Okay, a little bit smaller, a little bit more detailed. Okay, but here in these shadows, And again, you can play with this, play with the flow if you want. All right. Just like that. And I'm, I'm trying to focus and concentrate on where there might be a shadow in the scene, OK, on these rocks. And pay attention to the direction of the rock formations as well. OK, a little bit of shadow in there. Well, contrast is really what's going to give you that feeling of depth and three-dimensionality in your painting or drawing, whatever you're doing. OK, so kind of just blocking in some darks here. Um, as we get further into the canyon, you know, just use some bigger 
or I will use some bigger, broader strokes. This is all now in one layer, so I'm trying to be a bit more careful about my boundaries. I guess a little bit like life. We all need boundaries. Um, <laughs> but I am focusing and trying to be a little bit more careful here. For example, as I kind of approach this rock formation in the foreground, just being a little bit more careful about how I frame that in. Just keep painting here, guys. So one thing I will admit, you know, like I mentioned, I'm a product designer, but I love art. I love painting. I've never been great at it until I discovered Fresco. Fresco just gives you the opportunity to, um, you know, use use materials that, that feel real, but also it's free. <laughs> I don't have to buy you know, tons of oil paints and all of that to get started. Um, Fresco does a really good job, okay, of replicating those tools. So I don't, I don't mean to say I can't draw or paint, just I didn't, I didn't invest in all the, the traditional stuff up front, okay? So kind of nice that we have this option um, to use. Okay, so on the rocks here on the front now, what I want to do is create some shadows, right? So lights and darks, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to tap here and just move over to where this color starts to mix, okay? And now I have a new shadow color that's actually cool and complementary to the rest of the painting. So I can use that to now create some depth and three-dimensionality in my rocks. Now I'm not going to paint all the way to the edge. I'll show you why in just a sec um, here. All right. Just keep working this. By the way, it's really hard to complete a whole painting in an hour and a half, so <laughs> we'll see how far we get today, guys. Okay, but like I said, that cool color now complements the color on the right, okay? All right. So we'll just keep going here. So think about, again, think about your light source. In my scene, my light source is coming from the horizon, right? So as this rock changes shape, anything that's away from the horizon is going to kind of have this, this muted shadow color. So I can even kind of just block that out and then just start painting in. These colors will mix, all right, much like they would on real canvas and we now have a nice little shadow happening right through there all right so just just think about your shapes in three dimension and that will kind of tell you how to apply color. All right, we're going to shift gears in a little bit here. And I'm going to show you how we can take a picture, just a photo, create a brush in Photoshop, and hopefully use this in our painting. I'm going to go a little bit darker here so we get some more contrast. A little bit darker, drop the brightness. Kind of just keep, keep working on this here in the painting, just like that. Um, like I was saying though, you want to pay attention to your light source. So here I'm just going to pick this pink and I can actually go a little bit more uh, saturated with that color. All right. And so say for example, on the rim of the rock here, start to add a little bit of those pinks. Okay. It might even be now we can start to pull out some of the detail on the rocks, right? Where we have, for example, these little ridges. We can have those pinks right on the rim, okay? Just like that. Just keep working it. Right. Even on even on our far ridge here, we're gonna have some of those colors kind of pop in. So 
don't be afraid to mix colors, play with them, pull from your, your canvas, so to speak. Here, I can actually, on the edge, just kind of go back and forth and lightly now mix these colors. Oops, adjust the size here. Kind of mix these colors on the perimeter. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see what's happening with the brush. Okay, but that paint's actually mixing. Okay. The paint is now mixing, and I have that nice coral with the brown of the rock kind of in there. So when you, I mean, this, this will take a long time to finish, but um, as you do this, and we add, maybe I'll finish it up and then show you guys tomorrow so you can join the stream tomorrow and see what this ended up like. Um, but just mix those colors and then even here on the rim, if I wanna go more intense with the color, I might shift my hue a little bit, up my saturation and brightness, okay. And reduce my brush size here and just come in and start to go a little bit more intense with some of these, some of the color here. And to create the feeling of intensity, I'm actually gonna pick something like a white, certain points, okay? Just kind of blend those together. So now when I zoom out, we have just little hits of really intense light, okay? So you can kind of work things that way. Um, here's our shadow color again. Fresco is just amazingly powerful when it comes to uh, these live brushes, like, and, and so many other things, but just amazingly, amazingly powerful. So get your hands dirty, digitally dirty. Start painting and see what you guys can come up with. All right, so I'm gonna switch over here to Photoshop. Well, first I'm gonna switch to my mug so you guys will see me. You can watch my hat though. All right, you can watch my hat. And then I'm just gonna make a quick hardware change here. Quick hardware change and we'll jump into Photoshop, all right? Okay, so just remember, when in doubt, rough it out, light till you get it right, think about layers, think about things like that, and um, you know, plan your, your drawing out. Oh shoot, this got resized somehow. Give me just a sec, oh, that's why. My bad. Just a sec, guys, here we go. Uh, let's see. Okay, boom. Woo, all right. <laughs> I had a little, hard, little software bug there, so my apologies. Okay, so I just went online and found some simple, um, let me turn my dock off here as well. Uh, boom. All right, so I just went online, found a tree, and I wanna show you how you can make a brush. So if you're painting and you want to, say, apply a bunch of dead trees on your painting, you can actually do that. All right, so let's take these two examples, and again, hopefully um, by the time I save these, it'll be all, it'll be all synced here. Um, so basically, you can take any image, and I'll just show you a simple brush. We're not gonna do anything too crazy, but I do need to uh, make some adjustments to this image, all right? So this is Adobe Photoshop. It looks similar to Fresco. It has a dark interface right now, but we have some of those similar commands, move tool, um, paint brushes, all of that good stuff. <laughs> Alberto says, when in doubt, leave it out. I mean, that works too. <laughs> That works too, for sure. Um, okay, so I have this image. Now what I need to do is make sure I, I can make a decent selection of the image. Um, there's a couple things I'm observing about it. The background isn't really clean. I have some clouds here. So there's a couple ways to address this. One, we can hit select subject. This happens to be a black and white image. If your image is black and white and has reasonably good contrast, it's gonna be a lot easier for Adobe Photoshop to pick this out. So I'll do that again because here you can see we have the marching ants, as I like to call them, around our shape. 
but we missed a couple spots, okay? And that's because of the differences in contrast. So it's looking at the pixels and making determinations as to what to select. I've had better, better luck when the contrast is a little bit higher. So to do that, I'm gonna go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, or Control L, Command L. Okay, Levels L, think of it that way. And we have this histogram that pops up. Okay, now I'm not a mad scientist. I don't know what all the algorithms do here, but I know what the sliders do. So I'm gonna slide my black slider over. The black slider is the one on the far left. Okay, and that's the black channel slider um, for RGB. So I'm gonna tap that, slide it in a little bit, and look at how the image changes. Now I have a very intense silhouette of the tree. Pretty cool, right? So I can adjust that, and now, on the white slider, I'm going to take that and pull it in and look what happens to the background. It gets a lot brighter and we get some details popping on the tree. And this is important when we make the brush. So we want some nice contrast in that tree. Okay, so I've slid that in this case about halfway in. Another way to do this, since we all like multiple ways to do things, is you have these eyedropper tools in this panel. Okay, um, Jan is asking, can I use select subject? Yes, you can. <laughs> Absolutely. I just don't want to do the cleanup. So I'm doing some prep before I do that cleanup. Okay. So <laughs> thank you guys. I'm, I'm glad you like the hat. I'll wear it again tomorrow, but we have to figure out what is the hat going to say tomorrow? How about you guys give me some ideas in the chat? Okay. So now I'm going to tap this white eyedropper. That's the one on the far right, just like the slider is on the far right. Okay. Makes sense. And I can actually zoom in on the image. Okay, so let's zoom in here. And what I wanna do is pick what I perceive to be the darkest area within the lightest area on the image. So if I just pick this dark spot on the clouds, tap it once, okay, it actually makes the adjustments for me. So I have the details on the tree just enough. You know, I'm thinking about my, my painting that I was just working on, what's gonna happen um, as I change the scale of some of these things. And now I'm gonna hit okay. All right, cool. So I have some good contrast, really important because it's going to help select subjects. So now I'm going to go select subject. Okay. And it's going to pick all this and that little problem area should be gone for the most part. Is it? Let's see. Eh, it doesn't really matter too much, but um, mostly gone. If we need to, you can switch to quick mask mode and make some corrections, whatever. But I just want to show you how to make this in a brush. Okay. So that actually does help a little bit select subject okay and I'm gonna make a new layer so layer one now I'm not gonna label these layers for you guys but layer one now is that tree I can take this move it around and you'll see it there all right I'm gonna make a small transform here just scale this down a little bit and you'll see what I mean when I say the details don't matter as much all right so now this is a little bit smaller I'm actually gonna, you can take the marquee tool, you could just select the pixels on the layer. I'm just gonna hit this rectangular selection. And then I'm gonna go to edit, okay? Edit, define brush preset, all right? So edit, define brush preset, all right? So it's gonna ask me, what do you wanna call this? And you can kind of see a pixel size assigned to that. That's why I didn't, that's why I scaled the tree down. The better way to do this would actually be to create a new document and I can hit custom, I can pick the, the, the size of this. So if I don't want this brush to be more than 200 pixels wide uh, and 200 pixels um, high, I can hit create and then take this tree, paste it into my new document and transform it so it fits in this size. And that'll be essentially the size of that brush. Now those details should be there. There will be a little bit more pixelated right but those details are there I'm just gonna roll with what we had but just want to show you what that meant exactly so back to edit define brush preset okay now it's saying tree 2.jpg JPG I'll just call it tree 1 and I have a bunch of brushes here so don't get too confused but I'm gonna go to window brush settings okay it's gonna pull up this window here and I also want to go to window brushes. So if you've never done this, you have two windows you can play with, your brushes and your brush settings. I'm just going to nest these together. OK, 
Okay, here's some brushes I've created before, but there's tree one right there. Okay, now <laughs> you got a little preview there. If I just pick the default colors, if you hit D on the keyboard, <laughs> if you hit D on the keyboard, okay, you will see the colors turn to black and white. And I had caps lock on, so the preview was hidden. If you're using a brush, this was incredibly frustrating to me when I started using Photoshop, so I just want to tell you this. If your brush preview disappears, it might be that caps lock is selected. So if you select caps lock, it does hide your brush preview. But there you can see I now have a stamp on the brush. Now, I need to adjust some settings here, okay? Because what's kind of happening is this, this brush, it's taking this tree and repeating it over and over. All right, so I need to go to brush settings. There's a setting here called transfer. I can turn that off. And let's see, I believe it's transfer. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. I do know if you click with the mouse, it'll give you a 100% um, on that brush. But let's, let's focus on a few other things for now. So there's some settings we can change, like size jitter. So if I want the size to be variable, as I am uh, painting, right, and use the pen pressure. So if I wanted to create a forest of trees, right, I could do that just like that. And then I have kind of some general shapes and then I can paint on top of those shapes. So hopefully you're kind of seeing where this is going. I can turn on scattering, okay? So scattering is going to allow me to scatter those trees. So if I want to put a bunch of trees down, I can create a whole forest. All right, so just showing you what that one does. Um, under brush tip shape though, the one I want to pay attention to is spacing. Okay, so I'm gonna up the spacing on this brush. And what that's gonna do, let's make a new layer here. But what that's gonna do is allow me, as I'm painting, to have these kind of spaced out, right? So it's just placing them at whatever intervals and the size of the brush is determined by the pressure of the stylus. I am drawing with a tablet today in Photoshop. All right, so pretty cool. Those are some things you can try. Um, transfer, I'm gonna turn off opacity jitter. Okay, and I think, ah, there we go. Okay, so there's this little setting. Let me go back to my brush. There's this little setting on the toolbar right up top here next to opacity. This is the, let's see, I'm just gonna hover over it. Always use pressure for opacity. You can turn that off. Now, some of these settings are global, so if you make a tweak, change it back later, don't freak out. But um, now I can just place trees in my painting. Pretty cool, right? So that's one. Now let's let's make another one. So I have this other tree, all right? You can see there's some, some grass, some stuff happening right there. Um, this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and select subject. So I'm just gonna go ahead, select subject, okay? Tim is correct, or sorry, Jan is correct. It does connect over Bluetooth. So I just hit select subject. Again, it kind of picked the whole tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and use my trick here again, just to kind of up the brightness of the image, get some contrast going. Okay, so I have this tree. And let's see, let's go select subject, just like that. So now it's picked the tree. It has some of the background stuff in there, that's okay. Let's go ahead. I'm going to pop that out of the layer. You can kind of see what's left. If you want to take it a step further, you can hit select color range and isolate those blacks. But Photoshop's just looking at the alpha channel here. So it's looking at the white and black to determine where to put color in the brush. And I'll show you why this is also important in just a sec. So I have this selected. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scale this one now because I'm pretty sure it's pretty big. And you can kind of see that. Let me make a new layer so you guys won't see the background. But at the top of my Photoshop window, I have my ruler. So you can see this is 1600 pixels wide. So if I want to scale this, this brush down, I'll just do this real quick. And now this is going to be about 350 pixels wide. So make my selection, edit, define brush preset. I don't think I saved those last brush settings. <laughs> I forgot to save those. So we'll have to do that again, but that's okay. That is okay because you know it's through repetition that we learn. All right, so size jitter. I want this brush to have variable size, okay? I'm gonna vary that size by pen pressure. Scattering, I want this brush to be scattered a little bit. I also want to increase my spacing for this brush. 
depending on whatever I want. Um, let's see, and then transfers, make sure that's off, okay. So what I need to do again, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, it's not gonna update that brush setting and keep it, so I have to hit this little, looks like uh, three lines right here in the corner, in the top of the window. I'm gonna hit that, and I'm gonna do new brush set, <laughs> okay. So I'll call it tree two, let's call it tree two B. We can change that later, all right. So now I should have, oops, the ability to paint some trees. All right, cool. Now, I think I downloaded some grass. Maybe I didn't, but that's okay. That's okay. You could do the same thing with desert grasses if you wanted, or if you wanted to put tons of, uh, <laughs> let's see, someone's really in a Christmassy mood. If you wanted to put tons of little houses or people or whatever in your painting, you could do that as well. Um, let's go ahead and... Okay, modify our other brush. So back to brushes, I have tree one. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one, tree two. Just hit delete. So tree one, I'm gonna go back to that brush settings and do those things I had to do before because I for totally forgot to save, all right? Totally forgot to save that. So just be aware if you are doing this and making changes, you do want to um, save things, okay, as you go. All right, so let's give this a quick test. All right, that looks pretty good. So actually, I'm going to turn my scatter down on this. And let's change my brush size, the default size. OK, that feels better. Let's change that default size. And I do want to increase my spacing. Yeah, something like that. All right, so now I'm going to tap Hit new brush preset, we'll call this tree 1B, and back to my brushes, I'm gonna delete that, okay? So you can see there's tree one, which was the original, and it's, it's just the default settings, okay? Totally default settings. But tree 1B has the settings I want. So that's why I had to create that new preset. You can right click, delete brush, or just hit the trash can in the window. I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so let's create a library and have that sync over to Fresco. And this is one of the things I just absolutely love about Adobe Creative Cloud. So, I'm gonna go to my libraries here. All right, and let's go ahead and make a new library. I'll call this Trees, hit okay. And I'm just gonna drag these brushes in, okay, one, Two. So I'm going to drag those in. Let me check my iPad. Where are you? Where are you? Okay. So I'm just going to check my iPad real quick. Let that simmer and cook, so to speak. <laughs> just for a little bit here. All right. Boom. So I am synced. So we're going to switch back over back to my mug. Let's get it started, guys. Okay, so back to my mug here. I'm gonna switch over to the iPad. This is like an insanely technical setup today, by the way. I'm doing this because I love you. All right, boom. So now we're back to Fresco. <laughs> here we go, home stretch. All right, so, and we'll have time to add some more paint, which is awesome. So let's say on this, this knoll far away, I do want to add some trees or tree silhouettes, whatever. I'm gonna just make a new layer just to be safe. You know, you don't wanna destroy your image necessarily as you're trying new things. So here I'm going to tap on my pixel brushes and you'll see there's a section at the bottom that says library brushes. So I have Sketch-A-Day brushes. That's actually this YouTube channel that I, I present on sometimes. Um, and then I have some brushes from Kyle Webster, but here's my trees that I just created, tree 1B and tree 2B, right there. It's pretty cool, right? So if I want to, let's say we want to try out tree 1B, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size. It did pull it in at 39 pixels. You can see the stamp preview for the tree. We can even change the color of the trees. So if we don't want them totally black, if we want them more of a cool color, for example, we can do that. And now I can paint trees just on my horizon. Okay, or not my horizon, on my landscape here, all right? And the pressure sensitivity is determining the size of the tree. Now, in this painting, 
yes, I don't want the same tree. So I would advise if you're going to do this, have a few have a few different options, you know, maybe get a few different types of tree that you can put in to your drawing. But there's an example of using a photo to create some vegetation for your painting, right? Adds a little bit of texture and detail that you may not have had otherwise. Um, I'm going to do some work after the stream, though, and create some grass brushes. So if you're doing your own landscape, think of what else you can do to um, enhance your painting. What other brushes could you make? You know, could you pull in something like a house? Could you pull in some rocks instead of drawing them like I did? Uh, I like drawing the rocks. They're fun. All right, so we'll keep painting here. But um, again, you can see that is the power of Photoshop. Now, if I wanted to as well, you could sketch grass. You could sketch a tree and then turn that into a brush. So just draw it black and white silhouette, turn that into a brush, and then... Uh, import that. Tony says, I'd keep the larger ones toward the foreground for scale. I agree, but perhaps some of them are bigger, but still in the distance, right? Think about that. Okay, so there's our trees. Um, if you want to scale these, you could also scale them down. If they're too big, you could scale them up if you want them bigger. Um, all things you can do in fresco, okay? All right. So I'll keep those for now. I'm going to tool with this and mess with it today as well. So now on the top here, I'm going to pick this brown. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit brighter. All right. Go back to my oil paint. You can use an oil paint flat, chunky if you want. Let's try the chunky. Let's try the chunky oil paint. I haven't been using that one. Oops, wrong layer. Got to make sure you're on the right layer, guys. All right, there we go. So kind of on this layer here, I'm trying to figure out, did I? OK, I didn't. Let's kind of take this chunky oil here. Just make the top of a rock a little bit brighter. Actually, I'm going to go back to the round. I like the round better. All right, and as far as contrast goes, I can't. Oh, that's why I didn't realize. I was like, why is this not painting for me? Okay, I'm going to merge these layers down. I had another layer that was on top, and I couldn't figure out why these colors weren't mixing. All right, there we go. So now the colors are mixing. Um, and we can go lighter on the top here, right? Kind of mix these. If you do have a picture to kind of help you with the colors, that's totally fine as well. Right? Totally, totally fine. Let's go ahead and pick this brighter color. Nice big brush. Keep working that texture. I could use Kyle's grass brushes, but what if you wanted to make your own grass brush? Now you know now you have the power. You have the power of the Webster. I mean, maybe not, because he is pretty awesome. So I'm just saying, if you want to make your own brush now, you know how to do that. The power of the Webster. What would the power of the Tim be? That's the question. Also, I'm curious, guys, if you, ha if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I would say if you could have any creative superpower, how about that? This is all about creation. What would it be? What would your creative superpower be? All right, so we'll just keep painting here. Like I said, think of 
your lightest lights against your darkest darks, and that's going to help give you the contrast you need for your painting. All right. Tim Timsifies. <laughs> We're just having fun. That is like, having fun to me is the, one of the most important things about being creative. Like you gotta be, you gotta be having fun. If you're not having fun, take a break. It's all good. All right, let's get some light here on these rocks. Just keep working that. So smaller strokes for those details, right? If you need to zoom out to work quickly, that's totally fine too. Or just zoom in. And remember, you can make your brushes your own. So tomorrow, we're going to do more of a a product or object-based sketch. So as an industrial designer, I do a lot of product design, product designs. And so tomorrow we're gonna look at apparel, specifically footwear, so shoes. I'll show you how to draw a shoe. And then we'll create some other brushes that we can use, some texture brushes in Photoshop. We'll use those on the shoe itself, okay? And show you guys how to do that. All right, let's get some more light in here on our rock. Just some nice purposeful hits of light. All knowing Tim. Okay, okay. Wait, if we have superpowers, does it mean we have to <laughs> I mean, you could make whatever costume you wanted, certainly. You can make whatever costume you wanted. All right, we'll just keep painting here. Again, pick pick colors from the canvas if you can, right? Or if you have um, your reference images up, you can pick colors from those. You know, and your reference images may just be for color. That's totally fine too. All right, but I'm just picking some of these colors that I've been mixing here. All right, we can add colors as we go. Try and paint in the direction of the surface to kind of reinforce the feeling of that surface. Now, I do want to add some contrast here. I think I'll just focus on the fore and middle ground. I do want to add some uh, contrast in this little ravine. Okay, so I'm gonna take this purple and I'm actually gonna go a little bit more blue and a little bit more saturated, okay? Up the size here. I guess I could use the chink chunky oil now. <laughs> oil paint chunky. Yeah, there we go. I just, was, I just wasn't sure before. I was like, why is this color not, not mixing? This is so weird. All right, but right here on this edge, for example, okay, toward the bottom of our ravine, I want to just paint in so I get this nice contrast on our rock formation right here, okay? So just paint on this edge, increase our size like so, boom, all right? And we'll just keep building this up. Oh, I just love that texture. Look at that. <laughs> just, just, it's oh, so relaxing. <laughs> I just love that. Okay, and I want to go a little bit darker, so now I'm going to go a little bit darker on my HSB here. And just kind of work along this edge, All right? Just being kind of careful. We're painting on the same layer, so. Make sure we have our shadows in. I think I went a little bit too black on on my color so it's just a quick quick check here on the canvas we can pick the same color and now kind of blend 
these two together, all right? The dark into the light, I'm gonna get a different blend than if I were blending from the light into the dark. But I would continue to work this, okay? Continue to push this, work it, and blend those colors. So once again, today we had a last minute schedule change. I believe Tim will be providing that information or just pay attention to Adobe Live today. We've got tons of great stuff coming up for you as well. So fear not, your creative hunger will be satisfied today. But try out Fresco, it's free. Like this is a free drawing app and you can do all these things. And best part is if you use Creative Cloud, everything just works so well together. Like you really can't beat that. Okay, let's get some pink on just some of this salmon color here. Let's get some of this, get some of this up in the heezy up on our cliffs. So I'm a dad, I have uh, two boys. And you know, I was talking to my sister the other day, when you're a kid and you think, I mean, I have no idea what that means. So I'm being silly mostly, but uh, that's the circle of parenting life, tell you what. For those who have kids, you probably understand what I mean. All right. So again, the importance of just making sure that you kind of have these color. Let's take a little bigger brush here. I'm going to use the round again. Just kind of start to introduce some of the salmon. I probably should have started with the salmon. I could erase and start again, but it's all good. And maybe I will, we'll see. But I do want actually here, we'll just build up these colors, but um, definitely some of that color, okay? On these hills, that's what I'm trying to do. So I'll just put some color down to start. And we will wrap up. Okay, guys, thank you for joining us on Adobe Live today. It's been a pleasure. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow here at 7.30 a.m. as well. Adobe Live, warm beverage on hand. And we'll be drawing together. So, like I said, we're going to switch, switch gears and do some real objects, shoes in particular, um, apparel, a little bit more product design specific. But, again, the focus on creating using brushes and a little bit of proper drawing technique and helping you figure out some of those complex things. All right. Well, thank you for hanging out today and 